Members of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, today hit the streets of Tema to protest against what they say is high cost of living in the country. It is evident that the managers of the economy are running the economy haphazardly without any goals or well thought plans in view. This is just one of the many protests in Ghana over the past month. Today, after what appears to be a threat by railway workers to embark on a sit down strike, a quick action by the chief of staff and the intervention from the president have calmed their nerves and they've called off the protest. Now, are protests becoming the tool by unions to get what they want? What are the dynamics when it comes to labor relations and the future for our country's economy? My name is Stephen Anti, and this is today's big story. Now, over 500 workers belonging to the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, today hit the streets of Tema to bring government's attention to what they call overwhelming business crisis confronting us, resulting in incredibly low productivity and, in some cases, they say, leading to total shutdown of some business. Let's now hear what the ICU's reason for the protests are. In the midst of all this, government has also gone ahead to keep imposing taxes on obnoxious ob taxes, how we could best describe it. Now, government is telling us that it has placed it on hold. We want the abolishment of it, not to put it on hold. We cannot continue to bear this. If this automatic adjustment formula should continue to run, it will get to a point we will not be able to survive in this country. We are asking government to tell us the true picture of that formula. That formula, Ghanaian workers are demanding. What are the parameters of that formula? What constitutes what? We are demanding that the subsidies that we as Ghanaians deserve, it must be placed to lower down the hardship on the average Ghanaian. We are asking the president and his cabinet to consider reducing the corporate tax. Employers have kept paying taxes upon taxes and yet no relief to the business that they do. By these threats, we are being told 20 companies in Tema here are threatening to close down if by the close of October the current trend remains the same. This will affect over 4,000 workers and their families. Owners of businesses have begun folding up. And this is a real threat to our survival as workers. For which reason, we thought there is no any other opportune time than today. Mr. President, if you are sensitive and you care, take note and investigate what we are presenting to you. Well, it does appear that there are protests everywhere, and the ICU protest is just uh, one of uh, many that are expected to hit the country today. The big protest we're expecting is on Thursday by organized labor. Let's get some clarification from ICU now. We are joined on the telephone line by uh, the Tema regional manager, Elisa Nyaonu. Good evening, sir, and thanks for joining us on today's big story. Good evening, sir, Elisa, and uh, we are grateful that you could join us on today's big story. Well, uh, we're making attempts to get Elisa on the line. Elisa uh, Nyaonu is a Tema Regional Manager of the uh, Industrial Commercial Workers Union, ICU, who hit the streets today in Tema to protest against what they call uh, difficulties. Uh, they, they're calling on the government to redraw subsidies, I mean, reduce the fuel price increases, etc. These are so much to ask for. Elisa, you're on the line now. Good evening, and we're grateful that you could make time. So these protests that uh, we saw today, what exactly exactly are they meant to achieve? Elisa, if you can hear me, I'm asking your protest today, uh, what's your objective? Well, um, I don't know, uh, Elisa, if you can hear me, uh, we're trying very hard to get Elisa Nyaonu, who is the Tema Regional Manager of the ICU, to get, us on, to get onto the telephone line and give us some clarification of the re-objective uh, of the demonstration which was held today. Like I said, this is only one of the many protests that have hit the country. Today, uh, the railway workers who uh, threatened, more like threatened to go on a sit-down strike, eventually had to withdraw their 
their, their sit-down strike because they met with the chief of staff and the president made some promise to them. On Big Story today, we'll be going to them also, and they'll be telling us exactly what the president told them and what the chief of staff promised to do, for which they, they, they decided to, to go back uh, to work. So, uh, Elisa Nyaunu, if you can hear me, uh, good evening, sir, and thanks for joining us. Good evening, sir, and thanks for joining us on today's Big Story. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Sorry, uh, our line was very bad earlier. I'm asking exactly what these protests, which you started today, are meant to achieve. Well, thank you very much, and uh, good evening to your cherished uh, listeners. Like we indicated in this morning in our demonstration exercise, we, we said the state of the economy um, is a threat to not only to jobs, but to industries as well. Mm. Because uh, the policies of the government, um, industries are suffering. And ultimately, we know what the results will be if industries are not on the sound footing. Definitely, uh, the workforce will be reduced. Mm. And so the intention of the exercise uh, was to draw the attention of government that all is not well with the industries and that something must be, must be done to correct the system. Mm. Now, Elisa, I mean, protest, I don't know, I, I'm, not, I'm not a labor expert, but I do know that a lot of protests have gone on recently, and each of these protests is aimed at getting government's attention or on one thing or the other. Would you say that's the most effective tool you have to seek for negotiations rather than going through arbitration and perhaps meeting the various agencies that are meant to bring solutions? My brother, we have all been in, in this country, and you agree with me totally that this is the best language government understands. Mm. Um, we, we drew the attention of government that the automatic adjustment formula for uh, fuel and uh, utilities will not help the citizenry. But they went ahead and implemented it. Even though we signed, I mean, we were not happy about it, but there was no choice. And so I am rather confused, I'm disillusioned to, for you to say that uh, a lot of uh, 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 interventions uh, have been done to draw government's attention and so therefore why are we also going forward to do this? Let me tell you, we, our action was intended to let government know that the fuel uh, prices uh, that are coming on automatically are not helping the cause of uh, industries, businesses mm. and, and, and uh, workers as well. Um, we, ha we have been on the ground, uh, we are in the industrial hub, and we can tell you the direct impact mm. of government policies on uh, industries. Yeah, um, but, but, it but, is not only the steel but, industry, but Eliza, or, Eliza, or the, the point, textile industry. But Eliza, is. the point I'm making is that these protests, you've held them before. I mean, not ICU alone, but there have been other protests. And these are economic issues. The fact that you want automatic price adjust, adjustment, for example, to be withdrawn, is something that is so hard to achieve, considering that we need to get real and be paying realistic tariffs, for example. Well, what we are trying to say is that if the automatic formula is going to be maintained, then there must be a corresponding automatic uh, adjustment, adjustment in formula salaries. on salaries and That's wages right. as okay. well. All right. Because yeah. they cannot continue, the can, government cannot continue to be mm. adjusting prices mm. without the corresponding adjustment on salaries and wages. From the beginning of this year, in fact, from 2013, salary levels have been the same. Mm. But you, you, can, you can tell that prices of fuel have gone up for more by more than 97 percent what are we heading towards right at least come I, to the textile yeah. industries mm. come to the textile industries where they rely heavily on raw materials and the prices the 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 the, the, the city continues to fall freely against the dollar and other international uh, currencies are we saying that as the dollar increases uh, um, uh, employers in the in the uh, textile industry should continue to uh, uh, update or increase, you know, their their capital base, and then when they import these raw materials, mm. and then they put the prices on the on the on their goods and services, who is going to pay? And so at the end of mm. the day, it is you, the consumer, and my good self. So what right. we are saying is that our action is to draw the attention of government to come to the table with the labor unions, mm. and then 
dialogue. That is the opportunity we will have to put our issues across. Right. Now, if mm -hmm. government is comfortably seated at the seat of government and the policies are being rolled up against that without listening to the key players in the in the industry, I'm telling you, this system will continue. Yeah. And we are going to suffer and continue to suffer. Right. Like Ali we said in mm -hmm. the morning, a lot, a lot of workers are on the way of going home. And if nothing pragmatic is done, to avert the situation. I'm telling you, we are going to have a lot of our sisters and brothers coming back home. You can imagine the rate of social vices that, that is going to be in the country. Right. Uh, Eliza, I'll have you hold briefly, and uh, I'll get onto the other telephone line and speak to Austin Game. Austin Game is a labor expert. Uh, good evening, sir. It's always great to have you on today's big story. I mean, as we see on our hands, there have been a couple of protests here and there. In fact, too many for us to count. I see you today hit the streets. The railway workers were expected to start a sit-down strike. They eventually had to call off the strike because they, they, they were made some assurances. They met the chief of staff, they met the president who uh, assured them that uh, he will order the finance ministry to put in place some financial arrangement to boost uh, the operations of the, the railway sector. It does look like we are confronted with these protests. At the same time, the economic challenges that face our country continue. We don't know where to go, whether these protests will help, whether government is not doing enough, whether really none of us have a clue over what to do. So what would you say from where you stand? Thank you. Mm. I, you. You want to comment now? Yes, sir. Mm. Well, I think that uh, this is a very hard time for this country. Mm. I say so because uh, uh, it is um, a very uh, difficult economic situation in which the government has alluded to uh, in, in various uh, fora. I think that uh, organized labor uh, and various other bodies that are contemplating uh, maybe hurting the government to enable them to uh, sit up uh, will have to revise, revise their, their you know, uh, arrangement. Yeah. I, I say so because uh, this attempt to hurt the government uh, by any means, including the kind of demonstration and so forth and so on. Mm. But Mr. Gamay, I, 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 I want to pause you. I mean, you talk about the fact that uh, they need to revise their methods. Apart from arbitration, I've been mean, going onto the table and having concrete discussions over what to do, how much government can pay, and what the workers are expected to bring on board. What else at all is there to, to explore and revise if they are hurting to? I mean, people are struggling to pay their everyday utilities and everyday bills, considering that their salaries remain the same, whilst cost of utilities and cost of everything keeps hiking. So it doesn't look like there is an easy way out, is there? I appreciate that. What I want to say is this. Ghana is not an island. Mm. We live in the world uh, community that has gone through, they've gone through this kind of situation. Even Ghana itself has gone through this kind of situation before. Uh, uh, and they are still, you know, really under it. Uh, when it happened in the United States of America just recently, what did they do? And what are they doing still? When it happened in Italy recently, what did they do? In Spain, what did they do? In Portugal, in Greece, Greece, what did they do? In Ireland, what did they do? So we have to find out. We can't just pretend that uh, Ghana is the only place this thing is happening. But it's everywhere. And the way they went about it, we have to learn our lessons, document them and domesticate it into our situation, and find a way of arresting it. Mm. If we have to either uh, let go ourselves loose and, and because we all have a right mm. from uh, somewhere to upon to my hometown the road is not good mm. uh, if we also have to decide to go and and do that and everyone else will do it i mean it's just impossible for government to to solve that problem for everybody mm. so let's let's not pretend that it's only ghana yeah. and also the economic situation as we are talking about the, the, the issue of uh, 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 workers uh, not uh, coming out to demonstrate 
not sitting at their place of work to work to generate more money to even confront the very situation we are talking about. It's further worsening the situation. Mm. That's why in our labor law, we have faced, it's not about arbitration, perhaps you are maybe calling it like that, yeah. but there is a national tripartite forum that has been created by law as a, a means of getting themselves together as employers, as government, and as workers, and for them to discuss details of these things that will help them uh, overcome their difficulties. So it's not about... It's not about uh, demonstrating, and mm. that will be the mm. solution to the problem. It's only compounding. Yeah, Mr. Gamme, but, but you, have also, you, you have also said, right. yeah, you have also that said that, that with it. Mr. Gamme. So, Mr. Gamma, in our, in our discussion yeah. with you uh, on our previous platforms, on our other platform, you mentioned that the, the, the demonstration or the protest by the organized labor front, which is coming off on Thursday, is unnecessary. But I'm putting to you that today, for example, the railway workers intended to do a sit-down strike. They actually started, but upon a meeting with the chief of staff, and assurances that they received that the chief of staff set up a committee, uh, a, a tax force, in which, which is represented by the railway workers. The president also ordered the finance ministry to make provisions for some quantum of money to boost uh, operations, etc. They redrew their, 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 their protest. They called off the protest. Is this not an indication that at least threats to protest or protesting actually get some answers? Well, it's precisely what I said earlier. I was saying that there is a platform, the National Tripartite Committee platform, mm. that is available under Section 1, uh, it's of Section C of the Labor Act, 651, to enable them to take advantage. And it's not going to be government alone calling for a meeting or uh, some ministry calling a meeting. It's for both parties to initiate. You can initiate it. That is what the law is so flexible for them. Mm. You can initiate it. You can go to the meeting just like I had mm. uh, Honorable Harun Adrosu call a meeting. And then they can discuss these things into more details. Right. As for a demonstration, you are leaving your work. And that is where I want you to appreciate what I'm saying. Mm. You are leaving your workplace and you go and, and, and sit somewhere and you don't produce anything. Mm. You don't generate income which you are intending to arrest the situation in which you find ourselves. Mm. Are you are you worsening it or or making it workable? Right. The, as for the effort of uh, government, it's is, is always been there and it will always be there, you know, whether present or past. So mm. what I'm trying to say is that it's not a question of uh, uh, what they are doing. They can still do it in, that, in many other ways mm. instead of going to the street. Right. Uh, also, Gabe, uh, we're grateful for your time. And uh, we still have on the telephone line Elisa Nyaono, who is uh, regional manager of the ICU in Tema. So, uh, Elisa, you heard Austin Game that, I mean, these protests you are, you are holding, nobody's denying you the right of these protests, but are they yielding results for you? Are you seeing that they are yielding any results at all? Yeah, indeed so. Um, we, we have all been in this country, and mm. we, we know what is happening. I, I, I must admit that we don't take delight mm. in uh, our labor unions in uh, demonstrating. You mean you don't take Indeed, delight in the, leaving is, your work last, and uh, hitting the streets? It is the last resort. Mm. But you know what? Today, Honorable um, Haruna Idrisu called organized labor for a meeting, as well as the leadership of ICU, because... There was a threat of demonstration, and indeed, I see you went ahead and demonstrated. It means that is the language that sits well with mm. them. What we are saying is that we we are more than prepared to dialogue with the mm. government. What we would expect on the part of government is the commitment, the commitment. It is it is just unfair and and unthinkable for us. For government to sit down, to see that the situation is getting out of hand, labor unions get to the street before meetings are called. Le meetings can be called well ahead of time for us to dialogue because Ghana is for all of us. I, I don't think we are averse to meetings with social partners, mm. not at all. Because this afternoon, I was part of the meeting, and I can tell you that it was quite promising that if we can continue with that meeting, such meetings, 
I mean, something fruitful will come out of it. Right. But we would also expect the government to demonstrate some commitment. And there must be some discipline, you know, to, to that effect. If we are seeing how ministers are using the taxpayers' money when they go out, right. start the country, mm. the way they go about things and all that. And right. then they come back, no sanctions are applied, but they have been re rescheduled, you right. know, move from one sector to the other. Now, do you think we, we uh, as, as labor unions, you will be happy with it to say that, oh, okay, let's keep quiet, it will get to our turn, because we want to learn from other countries, like Honorable Austin Gamer is saying. Mm -hmm. um, 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 I, I don't disagree with him at all, but the point is that dialogue must come and it must be done in good faith. Right. Uh, Eliza, Eliza, quickly, uh, before I let you go, you haven't told us exactly what uh, your meeting with uh, the Minister Harun Idrisu, what transpired. I must say that we made an attempt to speak to him uh, officially I, on uh, this show. Precisely, but, mm. precisely. I don't think I, I would like to disclose this right. on, on air at all. all right, that, I, I can tell you that mm. uh, meetings uh, are ongoing and we believe that something fruitful will come out of that. Right. Uh, I'll still have you hold and uh, I'll get onto the other telephone line and speak to Alex Boating, who is uh, chairman of the Railway Workers Union. Uh, you, you told me, Alex, earlier that you called off your protest. Can you tell us what informed the decision to call it off? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I must take this opportunity to thank His Excellency the President for his timely intervention in this matter. Mm. I must say the president called us today, we went all right. He told us point blank that he's going to solve our problem and he has started. So he put table certain things on the table and we fully agree with him. That's why we have called off. So so you are happy that you, you threatened you threatened to go on strike and immediately from nowhere you've got solutions. That will send a wrong signal to a lot of people who will, might also think that demonstrating is the right thing to do. Not not as such. You see, we did not commence this thing today. We commenced this since 2012 mm. for salary increment. We were asking of this since 2012. You know our Mentally, salary is nothing to write home about. Mm. So we ask the government to do something. And we thank God today he has done something about it. Right. So what exactly did, uh, did the chief of staff or the president promise for which you, your members decided that it's good enough to, to now not go on strike? Thank you very much. One, the president has directed the chief of staff to release lump sum of money to the government management to do certain things on our Real line, mm. work on our real line. Through this, we can generate enough funds to support all the government has been supporting us with. Two, the president has also directed that a national task force should be formed and it should include a railway union member. And we are grateful mm. to that. Now, now, yeah, now these, these two that you've told me, a task force, I mean, is it time to form committees when really you were asking for better conditions of service? Yes, he has done that. He has promised to do it, and he has taken initiative, honestly speaking, on that. From, Je uh, from July, we will not be receiving the salary that we have been receiving. Mm. So I think the workers were happy with that. And uh, have, you, have you communicated this to your members who are also content? Because I get the impression that it is the executives of uh, the, the union which met with the presidency today. Thank you very much. Without meeting the workers today, we can't call on their strike. Right. We did meet them, they give us the mandate to call on their strike, mm. sir. Right, so, so it means that generally you are happy about uh, what you have got. That's correct? So now, yes, I can say it on authority. So, now, yes. so, so let's say one of the things you said the president did was to instruct the finance ministry to provide a huge sum of money to improve your operations. Does that include the expansion work that is expected on the Western Rail Lines, for example? As for the Western Rail Line, I believe it will be carried out by GRDA. But for, for the minimal intervention is what they are going to carry. 
But, but you see, the reason I'm asking for specifics is that it does appear to many people in Ghana that the railway workers in general have very little to do. I mean, where are your trains? Where are your railways? What exactly do you do when you go to work? So for you to threaten to go on strike and then suddenly some promises have been made, your salaries will continue to be paid, it, it begs the question whether indeed you deserve these rises and whether you put in productivity to earn it. Thank you very much. Railway, although it's a company, uh, the government is 100% shareholder. And it is not the work, and it's not the fault of the workers not to work. If the tools, the accessories, and spare parts are not there, how do the workers work? So we should not blame the poor worker at all. The mm. workers are prepared to work if they provide everything. If our line is effect, we can be working. So we are asking the government just to revamp the railway for us. When you do that, we will never come to him to beg for. But but but, um, but government could have work and pay our debt. But government so could have made you. We the poor will work. It's not our fault. Yeah, we but, don't have money to mm. do the expansion. The expansion is supposed to be done by the government. So we should stop blaming poor workers of railways. But government could have laid you off. That's what I'm saying because you've not been working effectively for a long time because you say there are no tools. But here we are. If there are no tools, your salaries are continued being paid. You are a drain on the national economy. The same economy from which you are demanding that action be taken. Is that fair? Thank you very much. This is all action of the government. Whatever decision the government mm. takes will support him. But when you go to the advanced countries too, I can tell you an authority that the government is subsidizing every new wish. So I believe what the government is doing is doing it on the right direction. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. Thank Watting you. is uh, chairman of the Railway Workers Union of Ghana. And as you heard, uh, we made attempts to speak to the Honorable Haruna Idrisu, who is an uh, Employment and Labor Relations Minister, but he is not willing to speak on record because he has been meeting the various agitating unions and prefers that uh, the deliberations go on behind closed doors until a makeable solution has been uh, arrived at. Uh, so as you know, Thursday will be the day that organized labor will also be hitting the streets with their nationwide protests. Here we are. My name is Stephen Enti, and we spoke to the various unions, and ICU and Railway Workers Union, and we're grateful to Austin Gamma who joined us on phone. We'll be right back with an interactive segment. Stay with us.